Okay. So, I'm going to start recording now as well. And, cool. So, I'm going to say that we're going to get started soon. I'm going to put this timer. How many tabs do I have, actually? It's time to nuke some, I think. Yeah, we can nuke this one. We can live without it. I feel like we can live without, without this one, too. Yeah, we're done with that. Let me go back to my Twitch. Not Twitter. Twitch. And we're going to get started, I'm thinking. We're gonna get started. Let me pop out the... Uh, let me pop out the old chat. So we're gonna talk about some and some game, not game, some goals for today, right? Um, talking about progress I've made, stuff I did this week slash last week, and then what we're gonna be doing in the future. Mm. And let me but let me bust out this uh, Twitch chat real quick. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Chat. Pop out chat, yeah. That's what I want. Alright, bet. So yeah. Hi. Everyone who's watching, either now or maybe in the future. Mm. If I do end up uploading this. So a lot's happened, right? <laughs> Since we last talked. About the about the Unity situation, the Godot stuff. So let's kind of make a list of things uh, we're gonna do, and you know, well, we're gonna go from here. All right, we're gonna make our agenda for this stream. It's gonna be a short stream, about like one hour, one hour, one hour and a half, give or take. We're just trying to get a feel, not a feel, but just a little thing, just to be keep you guys updated and mm, be productive online. So yeah, let's talk about do, 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 some stuff. So I want to go through the Unity update because the stuff with Unity has severely, of course, impacted everybody in the ecosystem, all the Unity developers, all that stuff, but also impacted us here at Cozy Cabin. So I'm going to go over some of the stuff they talked about and briefly and what, how that impacts us, right? So, yeah. That. The next thing we're gonna do, unit tests. So, I'm gonna finish writing some unit tests that I did, um, or at least started. Yeah, finish unit tests. And then, hopefully make <laughs> Initialize a new project with SDK. So the SDK isn't done yet by any means, but I have gotten the big important thing. Eh, one part of it. I still need to get some more stuff done. Mm. But I at least ported the most important parts of it. And I want to start working on the new project that we've um we have in the wraps um, so yeah I think that's a good breath of work for this stream so yeah let's jump into the the unity stuff real quick though let's get started there and yeah we were like having fun in the chat <laughs> going through it it was pretty dumb I'm not gonna lie man. it's pretty kind of whack man it's kind of stupid so, here's their open letter they posted a while, like, recently. Where's the music coming from? I wanna... Yeah, I wanna turn it down a little bit. So yeah, an open letter to our community, right? And it starts off with the whole I'm sorry stuff. I'm sure most of you guys have read this already, right? Um, and they talk about the new term that they're doing. So it says, are you... Our Unity Personal plan will remain free and there will be no runtime fee for games built on Unity Personal. We will increase the cap from 100,000 to 200,000 and we will remove the requirement to use, uh, to use the Made with Unity splash screen. So like this is much more in the camp of what we're doing. And 
Definitely sounds much better than their initial deal, for sure. For sure. Um, and the new terms are not, like, they're not, how should I say, it's much better than what they initially proposed, for sure, but, uh, mm. even if the new terms were super duper fair or super duper awesome for developers, I think for most people, they have their sour taste their sour trust relationship with Unity, right? And at least for me personally, since I'm in a position where there's not that much to lose by switching engines, uh, I feel far more invested in exploring other engines and or growing within engines like Godot, for example, right? Hmm. But at the very least, they mentioned that they're nixing the whole retroactive charging, right? Which is like the big, important, terrible thing that they tried doing. Did they mention it here? They did have that fireside chat. I need, I need to watch that to see what it is. So yeah, this is a whole thing. I'm glad it's not impacting anybody else in the future. Or uh, like, it's not... People can work, go back to work on their games and not have to worry about porting them over um, while feeling like they, like they have a gun towards their back, right? So that's a good thing at the very least. That's a win, right? But I think it's very much... I'm not saying anything, anything new, to be honest. Like, I think I'm pretty much reflecting what everyone else says. You know, it's good that they changed and backtracked it, right? But this relationship between developers and Unity is, like, fundamentally broken, man. <laughs> And I don't think anyone's gonna be, I don't think anyone's gonna be really jived with Unity until, uh, like, no one's gonna trust them fundamentally unless some bigger changes are made. Like, for example, dropping the people in the C-suite, you know? Gotta let some execs go, an exec or two. Like, even the person who wrote this isn't, like, the executive. He's, like, the lead of Unity Create, which, like, very much... I don't believe was the per like the department and or the pe person who is pushing for this monetization stuff. So the wrong person is doing the apology for this to begin with, right? Like it I'm glad the terms have changed, but as far as relationships are concerned, like this is still very much bruised. <laughs> mm. So how does this reflect and relate to us in our current games? Well, there's no hard decisions made, right? Oh, there's a couple, right? So the big thing is that the thing that's not going to change is that we're still very much committed to Godot for our current small project and for future projects, right? Or potentially Unreal, when it, depending on the what, depending on the target platforms we're doing. But for right now, we're very much invested in sticking with Godot and juicing Godot and making it grow. Mm. And as for Crimson Crown. This change is super duper beneficial because now it's opened the door again to at least allow us to finish Crimson Crown in Unity. So that's nice. We have that option available to us. Now, whether or not we're going to do that, I'm not quite sure. Going back to Crimson Crown, there is like a significant cost, right? Going back, our very, very, very made fundamental changes to the S our development kit right so if we go back to work in unity right i'm gonna have to bring all this stuff back into unity and then report some of that those changes which shouldn't be that big but still it's a thing um but at the very least we don't lose all the stuff we started there which is nice or the other option is to continue with our godot stuff continue moving crimson crown to godot and pay the cost of learning how to import all that stuff and transfer over the files and rebuild a lot of functionality. Now, as big of a cost as that may seem, there's been plenty of tools for porting assets that are actually pretty consistent and pretty good for Godot. So I'm actually not as concerned in that department and neither am I that concerned when it comes to the actual code itself because 
over the past two weeks, I've been seeing the basically the uh, engine equivalents for a lot of different things. That being said, the decision for how for what we're gonna do with Crimson Crown is gonna is not gonna be made today, right, or anytime soon. And the reason behind that is that we're making a smaller new game completely from scratch in Godot, or not from scratch. We're using our dev kit in Godot, but you know it's it's a new game, right? Very small, and that's gonna be our way of testing the waters to see if this is worth it, right? And I think I mentioned earlier that the game we the new game we're going to be making is a remake of Fight and Flight. So if you go into new grounds, you're going to see that we have this old or I have an old game on my page. Not old, it's like from 2020, I believe. Caught Fight and Flight. Which is pretty, you know, I'm pretty happy with it. But mechanically, it's not that complex, right? So we're going to take this game. We're going to remake it from the ground up in Godot, make it prettier, add some cooler mechanics to it. All the riz, right? All the riz. <laughs> to really test out how working in Godot from start to finish, from project init to export uh, looks like, right? And depending on how the development of Fight and Flight 2, we're gonna make it. We're gonna name it something differently because Fight and Flight is terrible for search engine searches. All right, you search up Fight and Flight, you're gonna find the like physical response mechanism, right? Not this game. You, you're gonna go to like page 30 of Google search, and eventually maybe you'll find our game. Um, but yeah, doing this is gonna be our ultimate test um, for how viable Godot is for us. And it'll be the answer to whether or not we're going to port Crimson Crown to Godot or stay in Unity. Mm. That being said, like I said, it's very nice that we have the option to return to Crimson Crown and stick with the current model. That's a very reassuring because not only is it, is it a choice again, but I'm not gonna lie, as nice as Godot is, there are some things I do miss from Unity. <laughs> I hate to say it, but it's true. Now, it's not that much. It's far smaller than I actually would have expected, but there's like one or two things that I miss from Unity Engine that I had to find some uh, clever workarounds. Maybe not clever, but I had to find workarounds for. Mm. One of which is unit testing. So that's me our transition to writing unit tests. So Godot has some unit testing options. They're not bad by any means. However, there are certain things I want to have. And I think the limiting factor here is that we're working within Godot 3, which means a lot of things for Godot 3 are either in maintenance mode, which means they're not adding new features, and they're actually putting all their energy into Godot 4. Or, you know, like, they're just not as popular right now, right? That's at least what it seems like. So, with doing stuff that, are, that is purely C-sharp, I'd like to have unit tests for some of those things, right? Just to ensure that things are working and if any changes are made that it doesn't break other things, right? There's a whole reason why people do unit testing. Um, so, finding a solution for Godot was kind of a thing. <laughs> uh, I tried what, what, I tried, and then I tried GD unit, which is by far the better option that I found. Um, but even then, as you see here, it displays the exceptions, but it doesn't display the full stack trace. And to do that, I would need to go into do something, set stuff up within VS Code, which I did, and it doesn't quite work, and you know, it's a whole thing. So what I ended up doing is actually creating a separate, separate solution just for my unit tests and referencing the Godot assembly or DLL for um for all this stuff. But hey, it works. Look at this. If I press Run Test, things get ran. Which is awesome. It's a, like a nice assurance. Uh, it's not as nice as having everything bundled within one solution, but 
you know, for right now, like that's the that's the best we got. That's what's working best for me right now. I don't care about doing any runtime Godot tests. I just need to assure that all the pure C sharp things I'm doing is uh, you know covered for. So yeah. Timer. I do have my timer running somewhere. I need to make sure I have my timer timer going. Uh, let's see here. I think I closed the window that had my timer actually. So I'm gonna have to start it up again. How long does it say I've been streaming for? Now let's see here. 15 minutes, that's not a big deal. Yeah, we can go back to one hour. That's perfectly fine. So yeah. So Unity stuff aside, you can get back into our unit test stuff. So I have this basic unit test already set up. Not basic actually, it took a while. But I finally got a fundamental unit test, or my first unit test fully running and pot passing the way I want it to now. Um, which means now I can go ahead and actually write all the remaining tests, which Heck yeah, man. Test coverage? Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. So yeah. I'm going to try to finish up some tests here. I might try to extend more stuff in the actual uh, SDK, especially at application level. But for now, I just want to get this going, and then we're going to start uh, prototyping the new game. The Fight and Flight 2. Which is what I've been uh, looking forward to doing. So cool. So we're gonna add a system here. Yeah, we're gonna do the the more the less interesting, less interesting, I guess you can say. What we're we gonna do? You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Mm, no, nope. we're doing the wrong thing. Um, writer, right. Mm -hmm. Let's think here. Let's think about what we're doing here. So this test, right? Let's talk about what I'm trying to test here to begin with. In fact, let's talk about this whole... No, we're not going to talk about it. We're going to just, we're just, we're going to briefly, we're going to just go over this real quick. So one important thing you want to be able to do within a game, right? Within any game is to be able to save and load your game progress, right? Hmm. So, what I'm doing here is I wrote this little tiny class that's going to represent the data for that whatever thing you want, right? Whether it be your health points or your upgrades, it could be whatever, right? And this class that contains this has to have the ability to write your um, write that data to the stream. It also has to be able to read it when you're loading it, right? So I wrote the capabilities of doing that up here. The ability to write whatever data your stream, your system has right to there. And now what I'm testing for over here is the ability to make sure it throws particular types of error when incorrect data is in the stream. That's the very gist of it, right? So one of the types of errors you want to have check for is um if you're writing the incorrect signature for that data right if it's data that just does not belong to a system so here i'm creating this stream that um i'm creating this stream that's going to contain all the data we're writing to it right and the first one's going to write a valid system to it but the second one's going to write 
incorrect data. It's just not right at all. So it's going to be something like that, right? So next up, we want to read this data. No, I should probably define it, shouldn't I? There we go. Oops, my bad. So here's the first one, right? We read the proper, proper thing. Cool. But now we want to make sure it throws an error when you're rereading the second one with a dumb, bad, goofy data, right? So we're going to do assert. Love it. Assert's the greatest thing in the world. Throws, and then the exception we're looking for. In our case, we're looking for uh, system, non system signature except. Yeah, this one. And then we have to actually provide the code that we that it's gonna trigger this issue here. So in this case, we're gonna do this whole game system. Game system dot read. And then our stream. And then our out variable. And we also have to specify what type of reading here? In this case, it's gonna be test game system, man. There we go. Now, theoretically, if things go correctly, this should throw. So let's try this out. Uh, does it recognize that there's a test here? External tester. It recognizes this test for sure, but what about the other one? Correct directory. Uh, what's happening here? Do I have to like do 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 do? do. It shows there's two tests. There's just, let me just run it. Let me just run it. Everything passed. I'll make sure I get the test here. See. No, this should be. Hmm. Okay, that's uh. Well, that's funky. Let's try something. Maybe I have to actually control build here. Uh, let's see. Can you refresh? Repeat previous run. I'm gonna test. No, let's, I want to check to see if these are ready to refresh. Sh run unit tests. Yeah, it shows. Okay, it shows the unit, unit test there. Okay. Now you see the thing I'm talking about. This is the thing I want to have, and this is the thing that doesn't quite show up in in, in the GD unit stuff currently. Which is like a stack trace. Not only a stack trace, but a stack trace that lets you click to where the thing happened, right? So if I want to know where exactly a certain issue happened, I can just click on that dude and it just takes me there. And it goes, hey man, you goofed up, man. You goofed up. Mm. In our case, it's throwing an exception over here. End of stream exception. Interesting. Mmm. I know why that's happening. I made, I made a dumb mistake. And that's because... Let me zoom this in too, to make it a bit easier on your eyes. Make sure it's something that's pretty easy to see. 
I've been kind of sick lately, and I feel like I, I feel like I sound like 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 Dopo Orochi from Baki whenever I talk very low. Yeah. The secret of Karateka. <laughs> that's what I. That's what. That's what it sounds like to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm just trying to like, gas myself up. All right, here we go. There we go. And then we run the unit test again. Boop. And we're the failing one. Hmm. That seems to have done it. Fantastic. Cool. So that's one of the exceptions we need to do. The second one is our corrupt corrupted data. So again, it's very helpful to know if, for example, save data got corrupted by some reason, right? Silver Surfer, Vampire, our planet. Um, Dr. Manhattan decided to time travel and shot out some gluons and hit your hard drive. Whatever it be, it's going to be helpful to actually detect when your data has been corrupted. Maybe if we're aware of that, we can either try to fix it, try to reset just with that one particular thing, or just say, you know what, buddy, this is why you can't load your save data. It's corrupted. You're gonna have to throw it out. And you know it sucks. They at least know that's what happened, right? So we're gonna have to do this so how are we going to corrupt the data how are we going to do that well mm, the easy way to do that is to just write to the stream and then honestly I repeat this so much I should honestly just cache this stream reference. That actually might be better. That might be the move. Just to re reduce redundancy. Yeah, that might be the move. That might be the move. Also remove these rights. They're not important. They're not important. Is that all references to stream? Yeah. Here we go. S dash stream. I'm gonna change it to source. And then G. Fantastic. All right. Again, we're gonna do this whole thing here. We're replace stream with source. Stream, fantastic. All right. And now let's run the unit test to make sure we didn't break anything. Cause we can do that. It's beautiful, fantastic. We love it. We love to see it. Cool. So now, again, we can do this. So you write our data to the stream, and that's cool. Now we need to modify the stream. So stream dot position. Let's say. Let's say, let's see, let's say position is, we're gonna go back to the very beginning. No, we can't go to the beginning. Mm. Oh, you know what? We can, 
We can do this. We'll go to stream.length minus two. So that should navigate to the last two bytes of uh, our, da our data section, our data section. And now we can write on there and that should corrupt our hat, our corrupt our, yeah, corrupt our hash. So let's do this. Um, we also have to make a binary writer. That'd be very helpful. In our writer, we're gonna write um, some dumb string, some dumb data. Fantastic. And now we should assert throws. Corrupted. Data corrupted exception, yes. Excuse me. And again, we're gonna do game. We're gonna move this new line. Dot read. Yeah. Source stream. And once again, we also have to set our source stream position back to the very beginning. Okay, now this should, in theory, run all tests. Hmm. Fantastic. So our, our corrupted data unit test works. So you have validate signature, we have corrupted data. So it ensures that we have system, we ensure that we have a catch for if the data is corrupted. And lastly, uh, what's the last exception we have here? Unsupported uh, system version exception. Now this is gonna be a bit more tricky. trying to think how we're gonna force this difference in system data but the more I think about it the more I believe that shouldn't really be an exception I think I think you uh, as we create new system versions, we should be able to, yeah, that's what I'm thinking actually. As we create new system versions, you should be responsible for actually maintaining and implementing how you're gonna migrate like your version one system to your version two and version three and so on and so forth, right? It actually sounds better to me than just throwing an exception by default and expecting a sec an exception of that type. An exception is thrown, it has to be done manually by you. Yeah. That sounds good to me. That sounds very good actually. So instead of unsupported system version exception, that should not be a thing. Instead, over here, we're going to have a public abstract. And it's going to be called, oh, I don't know. Cons uh, 
reconcile system version. Yeah. And this should be in charge of actually, if you have, um, let's say you made an update and you added like some new data that's stored, right? So like, for example, we have a game system that stores, you know, we have a game system that stores your, the, your total amount of health, right? Your max health. Cool. We can save your max, your max health between game sessions in case it up increases or decreases, whatever, right? But let's say we make another update, a version two of the game that not only has that information, your health, but also has a thing of like, oh, uh, now we're also gonna save uh, your regenerate your health regen's uh, speed, right? How fast you regenerate health. Well, now if you read, if you read this data, right? Now we have to deal, and we're upgrading from like, let's say version one, which didn't have that. Someone's gonna save data from version one, which didn't have that, to like version two. We now have to populate that data ourselves and reconcile it. Hmm. But now I'm thinking, how are we gonna handle that for read? Or maybe that's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Th this is actually not reconcile read, but rather. Because we have this new read method. Oh, it feels, it feels like we're going to have to have different versions of the read method for the different types of. Um, for the different types of. Because for our new system, right? Let's say we have a version, a version two system, right? That has both health and max health and regenerate, right? And now we're reading this stream from like a version one data, right? We have to be aware that we're reading a version one system, right? Which we are by this, by this version number that we have written there. But now we also have to know to only read for max health, right? Because if you try reading for that max health and the regenerate within a version one system, then you're gonna read past your designated like section, right? You're gonna read into other system data by accident. So we have to have a way. To prevent that. Sorry about that. So actually, now that I think about this, I don't like this reconcile stream version anymore. Instead, I say we pass the version data into our read, read contents method. Cause that's where we're gonna have to have this whole uh, if else thing. Yeah, so we're not gonna do this here. Instead, we're gonna go into our read method here. And we are also gonna take in a system version. Doesn't need it in default, because that doesn't matter. But we do need to have this version because, again, we have to be able to uh, to coerce old save data into new save data. One second. Oh, my sister. One second.
Sorry about that. That was my sister. My sister. Alright. <laughs> Don't know why it's like that. Alright. Uh, so. What are we doing? I'm lost. I'm scared. Ooh. System version. Yep. Yes, sir. System version. Fantastic. That works out perfectly. Then we have to build. And then there's going to be some errors in this one. Which is fine. Here we go. Uh, and system. Yeah, version. So now, let's do this. Oh, that's gonna be a pain. Cause so I do want to test this whole different version migration thing. However, I'd actually need to have like the easiest straightforward solution to test this would be to actually write uh, an old version to an to a file and then read that. And keep that within the solution, which should be. F I could do that. It wouldn't be the end of the world, but um, at the same time, do I really want to do that? Is that what I want to do today? Do I want to have this in my test suite? Mm. I might. I might. It might be the. Hmm. I don't know. I want to do that. Ah, <sighs> we'll leave this as a uh, maybe. Void. Old data. Not gonna be a, I'm gonna add the test parameter here, but it's not gonna be an actual test. Actually, let's see. Actually, now that we're, we're here already, we're like we're already here. I feel like I might as well do it. Ah, no. I'm just gonna write it to do for myself. That's all we're gonna do. Old data load. Okay. That's good enough for today. For now. Cool. Alright. Let's, uh... Is that all we need? Is like two unit tests? Is that all, is that all we're doing here? Validate signature and... Yeah, this, this, this corrupted data thing is actually, I just realized, I prematurely said that that passed, but I actually don't see it here. And it is a unit test. Do I have to press run test in it? Yeah, I have to actually physically, I have to actually click on it. And then it's added to the test, test suite. There's got to be a way to... In Rider to be able to... Run all... Like dynamic, have it dynamically search through all the tests and find it. It's kind of whack. But hey! This stuff works. Corrupt the data, read and write, validate signature tests. Fantastic. Very, very good. Alright. Oh, I don't have this. I don't. That's the thing. I have to have a second. Like, I have to have a whole uh, second. Like, we 
repository for this thing. Mmm. Because without it, because if it's in the actual Godot project, then you get all, you get uh, all these errors. Because it is not like this circular reference thing. Okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna. Um... Oh, you know, I could actually. I can. No, I'm not gonna. <sighs> okay. Just to do this, we're gonna write outdated version of this file. What are we gonna do? Um, where do I get the current path? I know there's, you can just do application. Can you do the same thing here? No application. No, no, none of this. None of this. It does not show. It does not show. Oh, that's not even the right application. That's application from my code base, not a general C sharp thing. Okay. Um. Okay, you're, we're, we're gonna do something. We're gonna do a pro game remover. We're gonna Google a little bit real quick. Oh, 29, 28 minutes. C sharp get current directory. Uh, application assembly location. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Okay, what is this music? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a too. I'm not jiving with this as much. Not it for me right now. This is not it for me, man. Oh, you know what? We can. Ooh, what would be fantastic right now? N64. N64 music. Sh music. Specifically Bomberman music. Yeah, no, 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 no. We're gonna go to the. Um, the Blue Resort. Listen to this. Listen to this. Oh, Jackie could jam out to this music, man. Listen to that bass line, man. I can't even play that. Mm -hmm. Wait, one second, one second. One second, one second. Let me entertain this for me, alright? Don't leave yet. Let me just, let me just... Let me try to figure this out. Let me try to figure this out real quick. Hey, let me try to, let me just try to put it. Oh, that's a weird modulation, man. That's a weird thing right there. Nah, that's whatever. I'm out <clears throat> with that. But yeah, Bomberman music is so good. Bomberman music is so good. All right, where are we at? Uh, assembly that location. That's what I was looking. For. Assembly location, this would be called using. Oh, get type. Oh, I don't know if I like that. I mean. Oh, it would go to this. This assembly. To the Kong assembly. Oh, I can go. Oh, directory dot get current directory sounds way cleaner, actually. We're gonna do that instead. 
Yeah. Okay, we have to do a couple things here. We have to make a new file path. Yeah. Yes, sir. We have to do the whole cool path dot combine. Oh, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's going on, John? How long have I been there? What's going on? What's shaking, bacon? Better. Match, match, better. I like this video, man. It's so, it's, 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 it's pure nostalgia, man. Enjoy it. Woke up from fat nap. Oh, dude, we love it. Love to hear fat naps. I, I, I feel like, uh, I've, I'm starting to become a nap person. Like it's becoming a very regular thing for me to have. My midday nap or a nap at some point in my in the day that is my actual sleep. Like I was wondering, I was like, am I just getting sick or something? But I don't know. Maybe, it's just, maybe I'm just getting old. <laughs> Even though I'm not actually that old, but I feel like it. Like I don't know. But there's something about a midday nap that just hits different. It's just it's fantastic. All right, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? So this file stream fantastic and then we're gonna do our game system right stream we're gonna do this once just so we can get the old version and then we're gonna do the cool new thing we're doing we talked about right of the whole like migration process of migrating old save data to new save data if you ever want to do that that whole thing yeah so yeah uh, yeah we're not gonna use this we're gonna use our new target path no there we go. Yeah, I was shaking with you though, John. Jump boy. Old system sys. System right. Is that it? I think that's actually all I need to do. All right, let me get rid of this. And then we're just gonna run it. Just so we can have our save data there. And theoretically we should have, we should see a file pop up in our solution. And it's gonna pass and what did we get here? Where's our assembly? Is it gonna be in the bin? Oh no. Is that what's gonna happen? Well, no exceptions were thrown, so that's a good thing. Uh... All right, here's a, a use case where we use everything. And we search up old system. Oh my good, I love this application, man. I'm surprised more people don't use it. It's so good. And then let's see, it's in, yeah, it's in the bin folder, it's in a bin. Ooh, it's in a bin folder. And actually that should be fine. Not much. It's been working on and playing games on the way. On the way to a nice promotion, so that's good. Hey! Let's go. Work promotion, let's go. Are you gonna are you gonna become a senior senior Kujo Knight? Or tech lead uh, Kujo Knight? Or executive? 
I'm just saying, man. You know, you need need some new executives. You can you can be the you can fill those shoes. I feel you do a much better job. Uh, okay, let's see. So let's see where this is. is old system dot uh, Debug net dot. Is it really in this root folder? Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, this is where the DLL is. Cool. If that's the case, this is where current directory is going to take you. Can I do the whole Unix thing where I, where I just have the directory and do the dot dot a couple times just to get to where I want to be? I'm good. You need to be shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they really do. They. They just kind of like it. Like, they're, they're, I feel like they're kind of mad. <laughs> you know what? Honestly, I do. We can blame the executives, and that's t- totally warranted, right? But all I'm saying is that it's just been a downward decline since Unity went open. You know, it's just been kind of a, a downward just trend ever since they just went open source. Or not open source, open. Out. If they went open source, that'd be a different story. But no, with the executive, when they went open, became openly traded, when they became IPO'd, like that, it's just, that was just, it was just going down, you know? Like having investors in, involved in anything games is just terrible, or anything remotely artistic is terrible, right? Like who would, like imagine asking yourself as a president of like, of a game studio, right? You know who would make a really good game designer for a game studio? Hmm. Investors. Completely separated from games. Investors who have never even touched a console, right? I want those people to design my games and make decisions about the future of my games and or tools and or engines and or insert X. (laughs) You know? Like, it's just never a good thing. Probably even a bit before that, yeah. 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 It's kinda wild. It's kinda wild that Unity is 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 super like they've been not making money. For such a big industry dominant product, the fact that they are just been kinda negging like negative negative. It's just wild, man. I almost said negging, like they're <laughs> like a big of artist. No, the fact that they've been like just Bleeding money is wild. Actually, I saw... uh, There's a guy named The Cherno. You probably know him. Who's making his uh, Hazel engine. And he had a good take about that as well. About specifically how... uh, You know. It's wild that they're bleeding so much money, right? And it's because they have such high cost for running this engine and maintaining it. Yeah, Cherno is super goaded. Cherno is super goaded. And you also had another good take, right? Because it's, it's like, yeah, they don't, you don't need, like, why do you have that huge cost for this engine, right? And yeah, of course, like, it's not all just technical stuff, it's other things, right? But still, like, why is your operating cost so high, right? And then the other thing he mentioned that I completely agree with, right, is that, okay, if, if, cool, it's whatever, right? Why is Unity trying to compete with Unreal? Like, we get, we get why, like, we get Unreal is a really awesome, powerful tool, right? That's used for AAA, and Unity wants a cut of that AAA pie, right? And it's nothing. Nothing's wrong with, you know, improving graphical fidelity and exploring the different tools and whatnot, right? But like, why are you trying so hard and investing so hard into going to that market when your selling point, your big draw, isn't the AAA market, but it's actually like the mobile and web stuff, right? And to me, like for me, those are the two platforms that matter most for me, right? Mobile and web, and Unity happens to do it best. Uh, Nabil always tries to be like, to convince me to go to Unreal, right? And I totally get it, right? However, I'm always like, what are, what's my target platform? It's web or mobile, right? And as cool as Unreal is, there is a lot of overhead for that, right? Whereas with Unity, you know, even though it's not as light as it once was, it's still relatively lighter weight in comparison, right? And which is why I went to Godot, because again, Godot is lighter awake in comparison. 
and we'll still have to see how web and mobile perform, right? But regardless, it's for sure going to be far lighter than the big engines, right? So if that's like a big market share of Unity, why aren't they just zooming into hitting that, right? It's a whole thing. But yeah, his take on that, like, I completely agree with it. Because, again, that's my experience with it. That's why I went to Unity in the first place. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It makes no sense. It makes no dang sense. Why, Unity? When you're chasing, when you're fighting fights, you don't have to fight. You end up here. You end up here making an open letter. You end up here saying, I'm sorry. Like Stan from South Park. Mmm, I'm sorry. <laughs> and the thing is, it's written by this dude. The lead of Unity Create. I doubt he was involved with the actual decision making here, right? I doubt Mark White, uh, Witten, Rittenbacher. Mark Witten. I doubt he's the guy who was twisting his mustache and said, you know what? Screw developers. I doubt it was him. And yet he's the one making the apology here. Unreal is great for realistic games, high fidelity graphics. Unity fits better for lower fidelity graphics, Godot. Yep. With Influx of Dust from Unity is going to easily overtake Unity as long as they don't divert course. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, that's why I'm like... Within this week, the past two weeks, right, of exploring Godot, migrating my dev kit there, and, you know, getting a good taste of Godot, right? Um, whatchamacallit? Like, Godot has the momentum, right? And it really kind of needs it, because right now, as it currently stands, there's definitely some things that Unity has that just Godot does not have, right? But at the very least, the mechanisms to add those features to Godot and to create that support exist and now way more people are pushing for it right and even though when going to Godot even though like Godot does 90% of what I want it to do right and there's some things that it doesn't have but I'm far more willing to invest within that and find workarounds until someone creates a permanent solution than to stay within unity and be subject to whatever kind of tomfoolery uh, they have up their sleeves you know <laughs> Uh, you know, that's 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 what it really boils down to, right? Because sure, the new proposal proposed plans, not the best, but you know, it's far better than what they initially proposed. But um, but regardless, it's not at this point. It's not even about the price anymore. Like the changes, sure, it's nice that we don't have feel like we have a gun to our heads to get out of this engine, right? Or if we drop this game, it's gonna be bad, or it's gonna be a bad time for us financially, right? Like sure, that immediate financial pressure is gone however the relationship between the developers and the company is fundamentally damaged and nothing's gonna nothing they're gonna do is gonna be done to resolve it right cc sdk gonna be some good stuff yeah 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 so like that's what i've been doing is um the thing it's kind of it's kind of wild too because i've done i've done i being able to with this porting of my dev kit to um to godot it's been a great opportunity to just focus on the core architecture of it, right? And I've been able to make a lot more changes that make far more sense, that make the architecture far cleaner, that has responsibilities far more separated in a, in a, far, in a way that makes way more sense. So let's say I decide to go back to, to keep Crimson Crown in Unity and go back to developing there. I'm gonna have to go through another like migration process of bringing over the pro like pro the updates I made to the Godot dev kit back into there. You know, <laughs> it's gonna be a whole thing. Oh man. But yeah, it's um, it's like it's it's at this point, right? I feel like people have are already made up their minds in terms of investing in other solutions, right? Which they feel is not gonna bite them in the butt in the long term, right? Um, even if it means you have to do some goofy stuff, right? In the case for me, it means I have to have, to be able to have unit test solutions for C-sharp that includes a stack trace and all that stuff, right? It means I have to create a separate solution, right? Because current solutions for unit testing in Godot, they're nice. Their integration with an engine is pretty nice, but they're not quite where I want it to be. 
nor do they have the integrations with Ryder that I so that I so desire. <laughs> but I'm willing to pay with that. I'm I'm willing to deal with that for now, right? Until a more permanent solution comes out. Not not to knock this package for Ryder for unit testing. JD unit has been very awesome compared to the other ones I've tried out. And talking with the person who made it, he said he's gonna make for the version that they're developing for Godot 4, it's gonna include Rider integration and all that fun stuff, which is awesome, you know? So it, like even if things are not where they want to be, where you want them to be right now, it seems like the momentum is just so behind the engine where so many different things are gonna become covered and fixed and all that stuff. Yeah. I'm still looking forward to C-sharp support in, in Godot 4. I see everyone in Godot 4 doing all this fun stuff, cool stuff, you know, having a good time over there. And I feel like I'm stuck a year or two back in Godot 3. <laughs> and I'm like, I want to be like those kids, but they don't support C-sharp in, uh, they don't support C-sharp in, uh, and WebGL exports. Big sad, big sad, big sad. But it, it is what it is. It's not so bad over here, you know? Yeah, there's some terms that are different. You have to use the spatial instead of uh, Node 3D, which makes way more sense. And yeah, you know, I have to actually use things like... Uh, let's find it. Uh, and yeah, I have to use things like global translation as opposed to like global position and stuff to do things. Like, you know, it's... It is what it is. It's not that big of a deal, you know. You get the idea of translations like it's it's not the end of the world. We in there. One day I'm gonna have to actually sit down and figure out Unreal. My goal hopefully is that I can get this in a point where it's I wonder how I need to look into this, right? Cause ideally I want to have a part of this dev kit that's purely C sharp, which means I can compile it out to its own DLL, right? And in theory, C++ and Unreal should be able to work with the things there. I need to explore that. But if that's the case, then it'll be kind of nice to have an engine agnostic uh, core. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't, I don't care what engine I go to. All the things I need, all the fundamental things I need are there. That would be very sick. That would be super sick. I'll have to, have to get the boys in the lab. Hell yeah. Yeah, boy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. But that is uh, neither here, neither there. Ooh, that's fantastic. But yeah, that's it's the things that we've been considering and, you know, it's a whole thing. But this whole this whole change to Godot has been actually really nice. The one thing that I've really noticed that I've enjoyed is that before it was kind of a slog to do Crimson Crown development. Not because the actual things I was doing was bad, but it was because my day job is in Unity and I go back like eight, nine hours a day, I'm in Unity C Sharp Writer, right? And then I go home and then I go into my Unity C Sharp Writer project, right? It feels like I'm clocking in for a second shift. Whereas now, like lately with this whole Godot stuff, it's actually nice having this completely separate environment for the most part. So, you know, I go from Writer C Sharp or uh, Unity C Sharp Writer and now I go to Godot C Sharp Writer. <laughs> I like my C sharp. I like my writer. We're not gonna stop that. But at least you know it's a different engine. Things are slightly different. They're kind. They're kind of different. I, I get to. I get to pretend I'm in a different world with different people. It's a whole thing, you know. It's a whole thing. It's fantastic. That being said, there is some things I've been doing that's like I'm trying to recreate my uh, C sharp. Ex, uh, Unity experience in here. The big thing being that that coroutine system I made, <laughs> which actually works pretty nicely. That's pretty tight. Um, it's pretty tight. Speaking of which, I need to make some updates to that too. All right, where was I? Where was I before I got into that? 
Unity Evil tangent. Oh yeah, the old system stuff. Yes, data migration and 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 validation. That's a whole thing. Remember player player refs? <laughs> Yeah, that's a thing. Imagine trying to do that with that. That'd be such a mess. Okay, what are we gonna do here? Oh yeah, I was talking about that Unix stuff. Yeah, we're gonna add a folder. We're gonna add this breaking technology called a folder. And we're gonna add, test, make it, call it testing resources. Yes, that's not a folder, that's a file. Oopsie. Oopsie. Did I do that? Is there no a oh, direct directory? Ugh. <laughs> they use they use the term directory. I actually like that better. I don't know why I'm acting like this. Testing resources. Yes. Uh -huh -huh. We're gonna bring you into there, buddy. Yes. Cool. Cool, so now we've generated this new, this old save data. Now we can delete, we can delete this stuff from this test and we can actually start making the real test, which is validating this. So cool, man, we're gonna go up here. We're gonna go into, oh, 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 oh. Did I make a mistake? I didn't make a mistake. I made the system version a const! Why would I make the system version a const? It makes no sense, Marco. If this is supposed to change between versions... And why would I make it in the part of the base class, Marco? I mean, I do have to make it part of the base class. I do, that's, that, that's a non-negotiable, I have to do that. Ooh, but that makes no sense. All right, we're gonna just we're gonna just do a pro gamer move here, and that pro gamer move is throwing out my computer, quitting my job, and we're gonna be living in the streets in a cardboard house because code can't hurt you in a cardboard house. But in all honesty, it's not the code that hurts you; it's you who hurts you. You make bad decisions in your code, and then it hurts you, and then you don't want to exist in the same environment as technology. Why am I saying this? You'll never know. We're gonna make this a property instead. Okay. Next thing's next. We go back into our testing solution and then we go into our game system tests and then we go into here. Uh, oh, you know what? I should make this abstract. That would be force new game systems to set their system versions. Yes, big brain. Oh yes, we're moving. We're moving. Build solution. Come on. Build solution. Show me the error. There should be an exception here. Why is there no exception? Where is the exception? There it is. And then move this back up. Yes, sir. And now we're gonna use two as our system version. And now we're gonna do our whole little thing here. We have to add our second value for to test this properly. Yes, sir. Uh, which means I have to also modify the other unit tests. Dang it! That's whatever. 
And then over here, when we do our, our hash calculation, when we calculate the hat, we're gonna add it to do here. To hash calc calculation. Yeah, because right now we're only using one value for that. We have to use two values, two values, two times the amount of values we had previously. Okay, and now, we go to right context. We go to right context. We right contents. I lost my steam, I forgot. I was in the flow, and then something brought me out of the flow. Ooh. Where is that coming from? Oh, there it is. One second. Why is the beeping? Where is the beeping coming from? I know my time is stuck. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're gonna I'm gonna help you guys out. I'm gonna stop the audio until I find where this is coming from. But also, John, why do hashes give you PTSD? There we go, found it. Alright, sorry about that. Uh, we're gonna do an extra 30 minutes. I can do an extra 30 minutes. That sounds good to me. No, not 30 seconds, 30 minutes. There we go. So John, when did your uh, fear of hash uh, hashes come from? Was it your father, your mother, your mother, father? The amount of times people break hashes? Yeah, that's a, mm, wait, how, in what scenario do people be breaking hashes that much? Out of curiosity. Uh, 20.20.2. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna deal with that in a second. Right context. Here we go. Our read method. So in here. If our version system is equal to, let's say two system our current system version. Actually, we're gonna keep it simple. We're gonna, this is gonna make more sense. I love doing early returns, man. Early returns feel so schnice. I feel so fancy. And then otherwise, value Oh yeah, yeah, that's correct, that's correct. Yeah, I forget, read single? Like that's the method to read a float. They have a dedicated read double thing for reading doubles, which makes sense. But for some reason they have reading a float. The method is called read single. It always trips me up, it always trips, trips me up. Okay, anyways. Work, ah. Uh, why, why, why'd they do that? Why'd they do that in your work? Are you told them not to? Are you told them to stop? Have you told them, you know what? Can we, can we just not, can we have a day where we don't do that? Okay. Okay. Value to read single. So cool. Cool. If we have, um, Let's make a public default value for value two. Uh, so this is in the case of like we have something. Oh wait, one second, one second. I'm using the wrong naming conventions.
How dare I? Let's say our default our default uh, value two values and be 32. So we go back to our reader and if version is one, we're not gonna break because we actually have to let this dispose. I believe, I'm not sure if return is actually gonna allow this to dispose. So we're just gonna say, does break bring you out of the current scope? It's actually kind of goofy now that I think about it. Oh yeah, I'm, uh, I'm doing return. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we're just gonna assume that return just gives you the, just re dispose of this and it should be fine. I mean, it's the whole point of garbage collector. What's the point of a garbage collector if you're not gonna use it? I pay for the whole garbage collector. I wanna use the whole garbage collector. Cool. You don't need this anymore. So now, if we go in here, it's gonna read the value one by default, and if it's version one, then we're gonna return and set the value to default, but instead, if it's value two, or something else, we're gonna read that value in. Nicely, yeah, I love it, I love it. I love in code, it's kinda, just like together, you know what I'm saying? I'm not sure if that's actually what you want your code to do. If we're gonna be real, <laughs> I think you want it to be like a. I like imagine clean code to be like a nice little wood cutout that just goes. It's dry. It's not. It's not. It's not what I did before. <laughs> what I did before is wrong. <laughs> that was not correct. Okay, now we're let's go back to our unit test here. Let's let's let's, let's do our unit testing. What are we gonna do? Old data load, yes. Cool. So we have to actually read. Okay. Oh my goodness. How are we gonna do this? Uh, old data path. And then we're gonna do path.combine. And then we're gonna do directory dot dot current and then what are we gonna do what are we gonna do this is gonna be stupid I know it's stupid, but we're gonna try it just out of curiosity. We're gonna do dot dot to navigate up a level, and then we're gonna go into testing resources, and then we're also gonna add our system name, which is system.sys. And if it works the way I hope it to work, it should be good. If we live in the real world though, it's gonna be bad. Then go into debug. Does it have to go, how many levels does it have to go up to? Cause it was originally in this directory. So it's have to go up from net to debug, then from debug to bin, net to debug, debug to bin, bin to solution. So three, three times. Okay, I have zero faith this is gonna work. I actually, I genuinely have zero faith this is gonna work. Um, but you know, we're just gonna, we're just gonna send it. We're just gonna send it. That's all we're gonna do. We're gonna send it on the arms of an angel. Um, open read, yes. Yes. Uh, old data path. Cool. And then we're going to do our whole little read status. Um, and we're going to do what are we going to do? Game dot read. Test game system, our stream, 
Oh, we should probably set the stream too. That'd be kind of helpful. That'd be kind of helpful, I tell you, boy. Stream. Stream equals file read. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, that's pretty, pretty good. Yo. Um. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 we have to also output. I could have got rid of the generic specifier, but you know, we're just gonna leave it. Okay, okie dokie. And then we're gonna do system.assert, because we love to do that. Oh wait. This only exists within here, doesn't it? Oh, I have to actually cast cache it. Ugh. I hate caching. This null spec specifier is not required, is it? Yeah, it's fine. Unless this decides to be stupid, in which case it's not going to be fine. I wonder if you could use Steamworks library and Godot since it's in C sharp. It shouldn't be that bad, actually, now that I think about it. If it doesn't, it wouldn't be that hard to write a C sharp wrapper, like the Godot wrapper. But no, you should be able to do it directly, actually, now that I think about it. That might be worth looking into, actually. Assert. Big brain time. Actually, you know what? I might sit down and play around with that, actually. Because I haven't, I haven't touched that. But it might be something... Well, that's, something, that's a bridge we do have to cross. Not for this game. But I know for Crimson Crown, if we decide to port it, then for sure. What am I doing? Assert equals. Yes. And what are we doing? We're doing system dot value my brain's hurting me what am I what did I write oh I used I used um system a dot value because I serialized system a I believe so that should be fine yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So these should be correct and then assert equals value 2 should be equal to I should really make this uh it's cool to make it a const but I think it might be better off making it a uh, static can I do a static const is that allowed no it's not can I make it a static read only That's not an O. That works. That way I don't have to actually get like a instance of a system. I can just do system dot value to default. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okie dokie. All right, we're gonna see if this stupid thing I did here is gonna actually gonna work. If it does, I'm gonna be very mad. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna be double mad, extra mad. With sauce on the side. Run tests. It didn't work. It didn't work. What didn't work? It got to the assert though. Which means... Was it able to read? Should not be used. What? Here. Huh. Huh. This wrinkles my brain. Uh, assert that equal should not be used. Use assert r equal. Is that really? Oh yeah, because I think it's like equals for things that implement the. I forgot what interface. I think I comparable or something like that. Whatever, whatever, they should be fine. Run selected tests. It worked! It worked! It was, it, oh my goodness. Big brain time. 
We can do. We could do that. We can do the unit. We can do the, 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 the dot dot go up a directive thing. Cool. That's actually awesome. And we're gonna leave a common price off because again, you forget things. And that is, do not change the constructor values for. Uh, system A, old, its value is used for comparing, comparing old data migration. That's not migration, it's, um, coercion, I guess. Old data migration for a for file. Uh, old system dot sys. Fantastic. We added a unit test first try. I'm actually, okay, no, not first try. I'm a liar. I am a liar. Second try. That's actually not bad. I'm actually very happy with that. Big brain moves. Big brain. Big brain developer. Okay. That's pretty sick, man. So look at this. We have, like, we're starting to build our, our suite of uh, unit tests. That's awesome. Ooh. I'm gonna have to bring over some unit tests from uh, Crimson Crown. There is some things at the application level assembly that does not should actually be in core. Uh, that's a thing, but whatever. This is fine for now. This actually gets the job done. So we did this. Now we can do the fun thing now, the cool thing, which is create the base directory or create, create the new project for our new game, Fight and Flight 2. That's not the name, that's a working title, but it's basically going to be Fight and Flight 2. Now that this is in a stable-ish... Okay, it's not stable at all, right? But at least some important stuff is there. And yeah, so let's actually do that now. Do I still have the GD unit stuff here? I do. Do I want to keep it? I'm not using it. I'm going to remove it. I'm going to remove the editor because we're not using it. As much as I like it, I can't use it for right now. Like, look at this. When it fails a unit test, it has like little text that wiggles down here, man. Look how charismatic this is. Look how charismatic it is. If only, if only the one thing that would bring me to use it is if it showed the stack trace. And I don't want to have to use Visual Studio Code to do that. So, yeah. It is what it is. Yeah, we're gonna remove it, sadly. RIP, add-ons, GD unit. It was nice to know ya. Goodbye. What if I wrote a custom win? Okay, I could do that. I could do that. But this is built in Godot script. I don't wanna do that. <laughs> I don't wanna, I really don't wanna do Godot script. Like, okay, so here, here's the thing, here's, my rationale, right? Eventually, once Godot 4 supports C Sharp and Web slash mobile, I'm gonna be porting stuff there. And the version he's developing for that platform, for Godot 4, a GD unit 4 point whatever, it's going to have those capabilities. It's gonna have like the nice integration with Rider, so I can actually run the tests in Rider. And I'm assuming it's also gonna have the stack trace stuff there, right? So, you know, I could, what I have right now is a temporary solution, right? 
with the understanding that in the horizon there's going to be a permanent solution. If that wasn't the case, then sure, I would probably either bite the bullet and add, make a PR for this repo and for this project and contribute that, or maybe even make my own, right? I'd rather not make my own. That's like, I just want to have unit tests. I don't want to have to write that, write and maintain that. Um, but if I need to, that would be done, right? But uh, yeah, that's that's where we're at right now. So yeah, we're gonna for now, guys. Say goodbye. I appreciate it. I feel bad because the guy was very helpful. Who uh, who wrote this? He was very helpful with me. Oh no, oh no. Raver raided with eleven friends. Welcome friends. Hello y'all. Oh my goodness, people. You're at the last ten minutes of the stream. It's all right. It's all right. We can we can change. I have the time stone. We can <laughs> we can we can do those things. We can. I have the power. Or in the words of He Man, I have the power. Okay, that's a little bit loud. We can pass it forward. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Ray Red, kindly put your names in the bag. Sure thing. Are you gonna death note me if I put my name in the bag? Is that what you're gonna do? You're gonna are you gonna death note me? Is this, is this what's happening here? Well, hi guys. You what? You came in just in time for me to nix this G unit stuff. Sadly. What's up, Ravier? So now that now that you're here, let's I I feel like we gotta. I feel enticed to want to get to know you a little bit. Hi, how how are you doing? What's what's your what's your interest? What's your hobbies, man? Like, what are you into? Oh, do you, do you like do you like uh, do you like Jaegers? Do you do you like that kind of stuff? <laughs> what's your favorite uh? What's your favorite My Little Pony, man? All right, I'm gonna stop. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the dev stream. Welcome to me. Um, I don't know what we're doing actually. Project clean. Oh yeah, we're about to start a new. We're starting. We're about to start a new project actually. We're about to start a new project. I'm Unity developer working Godot at the moment. Let's go, Unity refugees, <laughs> making space trucking game. Yo, if you got any like clips or any gifs or something, feel free to show it. I'm 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 down to see it. Yeah, what's up, fellow Unity to Godot developer? How do you feel about that statement? <laughs> I love this whole this whole ecosystem. <laughs> I remember getting like I was in a, 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 working when I got a phone call from my friend. He was like, "Did you get the? Do you hear what happened? How do you feel about the Unity stuff?" I was like, "What are you talking about?" And he's like, "Oh no, you don't know." Oh, I'm the person who's telling you this? <laughs> oh my goodness. And since that day, my journey as a Godot developer began. <laughs> uh, it's going to take some while to get this working, Godot. Are you doing a port from Unity to Godot? Or are you, are you working within Unity for this project, but then in the future you're going to be doing Godot stuff? What you doing? What's up? What's going on here? Ooh, this looks looking kind of sick, though. It kind of reminds... Okay, it's a bit different, actually. From the outskirts, it reminded me that that uh, first level from um, the beginner's guide, but it's very you got a different vibe going on here. Oh wait, you have two different. Uh, is this like is server and client? Yeah, there's client. Big brain, big brain. Uh, it's almost like I'm a. It's almost like I'm a developer. <laughs> it's going to take a while. Yeah, I'm just seeing what Godot can do. Yeah, that's exactly in the, the same boat I'm in. This is nice though. This is actually giving me some weird nostalgia for um for like like uh what should we call it? Like PlayStation Home, like uh Second Life, stuff like that. Trying to bring this character over here. This is actually really nostalgic. Just observe it. Especially this whole as a middle schooler, like I would have I used to be so obsessed with like a chill space setting for some reason. Let's go! You got a ship in there too? That just pops up. Can you go there? Wait, 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 wait. Ooh, this is actually looking nice. These corridors are nice. The other day, talking about Unity. 
You had your fr the person installing your front door the other day was talking about Unity. Yeah, it's I love it. Everyone, it's that was like the conversation for the two days. Yeah, it's kind of funny too because like I took a break from all social media, all streaming for like two years, and then one week, like two weeks ago, is when I got started back into it. I was like, all right, we're gonna get my feet back in here just to see how things are, right? So that one week I got, I took vacation from work. I did that stuff. I got to work on my game, Crimson Crown, and then a bunch of stuff. And then the next week is when this Unity stuff dropped. And I was like, that's awesome. That's great. This game we've been working on for two years. Now I'm gonna have to port it. Not even because of the financial implications of their model, but just off of principle. Just because I don't like getting spat in the face, right? But yeah, I'm actually in a similar boat though. So, I mentioned this game, Crimson Crown. You need to apologize and fix your terms. Yeah, I saw that. We have the thing here too. But like, it's, it's, uh... Here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. It's not about the money. It's not about the money. It's about sending a message, alright? It's, it's not about the money, alright? It's about... The trust, the implications, the the relationship. I will not. I will not stand for that. <laughs> so yeah, right now, okay. If we're, if we're going back, if we're gonna be real. Like right now, let's actually set the stage. Let me just catch you guys up, right? I had this game, Crimson Crown. Two years, two years of work with me and my team, right? Small teams, like three people. It's cool, right? This stuff happened, and we were seriously considering Godot, right? So, what I've been doing is A, porting my core development kit to Godot, and that's going pretty well, right? And the next step is we're going to make a small game within Godot, right? Now, not a trivial game, it has to have certain, it has to, church, it has to test certain features just to make sure, you know, we have a, it can scale to more, a more robust game, right? So we're making a small game in Godot using our, the ported over dev kit, right? And depending on how that game goes, we're going to determine whether or not it's worth moving Crimson Crown to Godot, right? Now with their financial, with their, you know, reverting of that, that, uh, that policy, it's an option again to maybe stay in Unity, but, you know, it, I, I, at the same time, if it's, if we're enjoying Godot much better, if, you're, if it's a, if it's something that we actually are fine with, then maybe we'll port it over. So not a fix if you know the trust and issue behind the TOS over the last four years. Yeah, it's not, there's there's no quite, there's no fix for that. That's gonna be, I'm sure you heard this term already. It's like, it takes a long time to create trust. You, ah, I forgot, it, you, it create, you build trust over a long, you can, ah, it takes a long time to build trust. It takes only a second to destroy it and it takes a lifetime or it takes forever to repair it. <laughs> And that's the situation they're in, right? So, you know, it is, it, it is, it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change ownership. So I'm gonna fly, This is sick gonna though. You're the, flying a two? Station. How long have you been working on this, out of curiosity? Alright, so I'm gonna kinda take turns. So we're gonna take this character and come back over Two years, hey! Two years, gang, king. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, this is sick though. This is actually really, really cool. I'm digging this a lot. Yeah, I just like. I don't know. This is actually so sick. Seeing, seeing this actually being, seeing the client. This is not server. This is like another client, right? Or it's a client acting like a server because you're acting in there. You made a star citizen. Yeah, it's actually, it's legit star citizen. <laughs> Okie dokie. Okie dokie. This is a sick project though. I'm actually, I'm hyped to see it. You know what? Actually, bet. There we go. We got this going. Ooh, you've been active too. I feel like I'm stalking you right now. Let's <laughs> turn from like a, to like, all right. So, uh, what's, what's this guy's social security number? Uh, where does he live? Where does he live? Hey, but you know, just offhand, just just out of curiosity, like, what's your what's your credit card number? You know, what's the last three digits of your credit card? You know? <laughs> I mean, I'm just I'm just curious, you know, you know how you ask people about their horoscope, you know, 
It's kind of like that, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Look at that. Look at the have actions. Young one's acting like a server, and look at the have customization. Okay, look at the key. In the second video or within? Okay, actually, no. This will be one of those things where I'm just not... Where I'm just not looking at the right thing. All right. What are we doing? Yes, I'm deleting a thing. So I deleted end unit. Not end unit. I deleted GD unit. We're gonna remove the test because we're not storing the test suite here anymore. Let's commit this real quick. Ah. Oh my goodness. I forgot the and then what's our message? Finished passing unit tests for system, right. Uh, there we go, and done. So, now we can make the new game project. It's taking too long. It was taking too long. That's why you, you decided to make it yourself. Star Citizen was taking too dang long, and you're like, nah, we're do. I'm gonna make it. <laughs> I respect it. You made a light. Okay. Well, I'll get command like a boss. Kind yeah. I feel like um, what should call it? Why is this not closing? Yes, quit. Quit, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I feel like it, I feel, uh, huh, I don't know how to say it. Like, I remember when I started my, my job, when I started working, I was very much scared to do git command stuff. So I just used git, or uh, 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 github's application, this. And then slowly, as like time has gone on, I've been running to the edge cases where you know, just just doesn't, it doesn't do things I wanted to explicitly. So I started, you know, with basic stuff like, oh, maybe merge from this branch instead, and do this, this, and that, and slowly it's become this whole thing. But this is actually not my go-to solution. I actually prefer using Git Kraken, which Kujo, if you're still here, John Man, if you're still here, thank you for reminding me about, about Git, Git Kraken, or letting me know that Git, that Git, crack, Git Kraken still has, uh, actually has CLI support. I actually use Git Kraken. I prefer that. It looks nicer. So I can have access to all the beautiful little graph stuff, but I can still do my CLI stuff here. And I'm not gonna lie, you know? Like, does typing it make it faster? Kind of, like, you know? Like, if your goal is to stay using keyboard like if your goal is to keep your hands here on the keyboard right if, you're, if your goal is to keep your hands here then sure that's pretty tight right however however if you compare typing out the command versus just clicking on the ui element it's not you know you can't you can't really actually beat that but at the same time i feel like it feels like a flex you know i feel like to i feel like i'm t-posing on people when i when i bring out the cli and when we do that Cause that's that's how I felt as a junior, and I saw my boss like just running the CLI, running a train on there. I was like, "Oh snap, you're a big brain developer." <laughs> oh, I feel I feel like a casual. <laughs> and now I've come to realize it doesn't matter. <laughs> full circle. <laughs> no, not full circle, cause I'm still using CLI, but you know, who knows, man. Well, actually, no, I'm using Git Kraken with the nice visual, so it's, it's not, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's a mutual, it's a thing, it's a, it's a, it's a nice little middle ground. Okay, create folder. What are we gonna, what's our project gonna be? But as an extreme hot, can't, so, the cost, right? Git Kraken's free. Git Kraken's free, I don't pay for it, right? The only thing is that if you're doing private repositories, then you have to shell out money. But if you're doing public stuff like this, which is like a public repo, it's good, it's a, it's full reign. 
or for some reason at work, I'm able to use Git Kraken in our private repository without paying for it. I'm not sure why that's the case. If they know, like, it's a... Actually, I don't know, because I actually pay for a premium GitHub account, and I still have to pay for Git Kraken, so... I don't... I don't know what's the deal there, but... You know, it's something. I don't know. But yeah, there, you can use it free. You work with private repos there? Okay, tragic. Uh, I'll bring up the I'll bring bring up the violin. <laughs> it's a tragedy. Okay, what are we naming this game? What's the, what's gonna be the? Um... Oh yeah, actually, for your context, just so you guys know. Uh, so we're actually not starting from scratch. We we we're remaking this game I previously made previously made called uh, Fight and Flight. Fight and flight. And you know, juicing it. So. This game is really simple, but I feel like we can do way more with it than just the three-lane runner and add way more su uh, systems to really juice it. So we're revisiting this game, making it look cool. Still keep it a pixel art, but you know. But um, just juicing it, just to test the limitations, not limitations of Godot, but like test how making a game from start to finish actually looks like and feels like. So yeah, but we're not going to call it Fight and Flight because Turns out, Fight and Flight is a very, there's, it's not really the best thing to search. It's not the best thing for search engine optimization, because who'd have thought the medical, physical phenomena would pop up first, and you'd have to go to page 50 before you saw the game, so, yeah. We're not going to call it that. For now, we're just going to call it pro uh, Project Flight. I don't know. We're just gonna call it Fight and Flight 2. That's what we're, we're just gonna do that right now. Or Deluxe. And Knuckles. With the Swiss. Alright, and select current folder. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, that looks correct to me. No. This doesn't look correct because I realize I'm gonna have to put assets adjacent to this, but not but not inside of the repo. So we're gonna make a repo fold, subfolder. Yes. And then we're gonna browse like that. Yes. Create and edit. And we're gonna use OpenGL compatible with older hardware, not recommended for web games. We're gonna be using 2.0 then. Yes. We're using this. Okie dokie. And now we're going to port in our dev kit. Which, funny enough, I was talking about flexing uh, command line stuff, but uh, I actually don't know how to pull or clone a repo from there. So we're just going to do this. <laughs> and... Yes. We're gonna port, we're gonna clone it to, oh, there's like a clone command, but I don't know the, I don't wanna look for the actual link and everything. So we're just gonna do this. What am I doing? Cozy Cabin Games, yes. Uh, Fight and Flight Deluxe, yes. Repo, yes. Select folder, yes. Can only clone to empty folders. Oh, wait, 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 wait. And we have to also make this. There we go. And we can select this. And that should be fine. Yes. And then where is CCTK Godot? There we go. And then we clone. Bam. Bam. And now we got the dev kit there. Dev kit, where are you? What happened? I did commit things. Where is the dev kit? Mm, does show the game system stuff there. 
Do I have to pull? Fetch? What are we doing? Okay. I'm very confused. You f okay, let's actually go into the file, like, file resource. Ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. Yep. Yep. Okay, so maybe because it's a sub module, it's not going to show it. Man, I picked up the changes. Yeah, let's restart the editor. Yes. And then open it up. And then Fight and Flight Deluxe. Yeah. Yeah, no, okay, I think I think I know what's going on. It's not showing there because I believe it's a sub module. So it doesn't because I, I think it does that too with um No, actually that's that's dumb. That doesn't make sense because I did do that did do that with the coaching stuff. But I didn't clone it there. I initialized the repository there. The code already existed. So maybe that's the case? Oh, you know what? No, no, no. That's not that. That's not it. Okay, real test time. We're gonna test to see if we're gonna see if we can do if we can use any of the code from there. We're gonna do that instead. So let's make a new script. C sharp pool. And yeah, that's fine. Are so fun to deal with. Yeah, they're the greatest. Everyone loves sub modules. Dude, I love having a PR that's spread across so like three or two different sub, uh, th three or two different repositories. That's fun and great. It's fantastic. I love it. All right, let's see if we have access to things here. Ooh, this would be bad if. Because for the um, oh, for the coroutine runner stuff I wrote, I'd have to actually add it as an auto load. But if I can't access the files here, then that's bad. That'd be terrible. Uh, why are you not? Yes, trust open new window. Okay. So out of curiosity, why do you have to add that directive there? That's not required. Are you generating the solution? I can explore in the solution explorer. Yeah, it pops up there. Okay, we're gonna do something here. Cool game remove. Uh, fight and flight two application. And if things work out great, I can extend from application and things should be great. Yep, so it does register. It's still, it's all there. Oh, you know what? I think I might know what's the, at least part of it. And it's a fact that's in its own, it's in, it's in its own separate assembly as well. Hmm. This is weird. This is weird. Set back end. Where's the back end builder stuff? Two inheritors. Uh, example application. Yeah, this should be something that's actually in, a, in an abstract method that forces you to actually implement it yourself. Because right now, I have to actually just assume... Oh, that's probably why, because it's on ready. Okay. I hate this naming convention. It makes me mad. Is this a read-only property? Ronald Weasley. Is that how it is here? No, so this has to be... Oh, okay, there's some changes I have to make here. Okay, but at the very least, we still have access to this. Which is nice. Let's see if we can add the auto-load. Um, 
If we have, if we can add the auto load, then we're in business. We are in business, which is good. Uh, project settings, auto load. Uh, new one, CCDK. Oh, that's fantastic. That's great. That's, ooh. Ooh, I love this. This is great. That's great. I did. It's fantastic. I can't. I can't. It's there. It exists. This is, oh my word, this is befuddling. Maybe using a submodule was a mistake. I'm not gonna lie. It's starting to feel like that. this sounds like not a problem for today I think we're just ending here because I still need to get my food we're four minutes till so we're gonna call it here I guess for now though uh, let's choose someone to raid let's actually get into this I haven't done a raid in forever so let's uh let's let's extend the same courtesy you guys you guys have shown me Let's go find a place, a new home for y'all. Um, wow, I haven't done this in a minute. Like actually interact meaningfully. Let's go to game development. Uh, technology? What? 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 Okay. Um. Well, how do we search? Uh, that's that's not game dev. Software and, and game development. Okay, we'll do that. We can do that. Software and do you actually have to type it in for? Okay, so their search thing is kind of busted. We're gonna do this instead. Ah, there we go. Why would why would you want to use that search bar right next to the actual categories to search for a category? Why would you want to do that? That's that's lunacy, man. Okay, let's see. Who who? Who do we have here? Uh, 3D card game and game maker. Ew! I hate game maker. It actually started there. Top search for categories, small ones just for tags. Yeah, Twitch stupid. Twitch bad. Twitch evil. Yeah, this. I mind this guy. I mind this guy. Uh 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 uh. Let me eye on that person. Anybody else here? Anybody else here doing something cool looking from the outset? Ooh, a sprite gang, a sprite gang. Oh, I don't approve of that theme though. Day twenty eight Swift Astro Photography app. What? I don't know what that is, but it sounds too close to astrology. And I can't condone even a basic, 
even a tangential relation to that. Godot at the house. All right. Let's see this. What is this person doing? Let's actually turn off the music I have going on here so we can actually spy on these people properly. I want to be able to spy in peace. Where's the music coming from? Oh, it's... Do I have another? Oh, I do have another window. There we go. I always end up having like six different windows, dude. It's annoying. I have a problem. I have a real problem. Okay, 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 So, what is this person doing? Hmm. That's a lot of good dough. Do you think so? That's a lot of GD script. All right, let's go back to this dude. He's buffering. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Well, decision time. Decision time is here. All right. This is going to be one. This is going to be two. We're going to gamble today. We're going to be gambling. Random number generator. All right, and we said one and two, right? So min value, max value, this better be inclusive. Generate, Juan, you guys good with one? Objections, no objections in three, two, one. All right, it is committed. We're gonna be rating this person. Kite Lion Games. All right, fellers, let's get them. All right. So I remember it was slash raid. Yes, that's still correct. And then a channel name. Let me press. Cool. Raid is beginning. Guys, show them some, some uh, I don't know. Same, the, same, the same thing you showed me. Should be cool and show you guys. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. All right. Peace.